while I stare at the plate. Sweet for me while I'm drinking Bloody Mary. A little dog hair ain't never shown enough to leave. Things are bad and I'm getting a little hot from a day in the same. My thoughts will never stray. I'm thinking of flavor, the flavor now or later. I'm Puerto Rican with this. Thinking of no other way. We never did think of a way to make ourselves eat all the things we're cooking every day. Soon enough, the shoes have to be Hi, welcome to Raw. I'm Lena, and you just heard Cousin Earth sing Puerto Rican pancakes. And here with me now is Cousin Earth. Hi. How's it going? Hey, Lena. All right, let's get everybody's name starting with you. I'm Joe. Joe. I'm Terry. Hi, Terry. I got. I can't see you back there. I'm Tara. Hey. Hi. I'm Corey. I'm Nate. Hi. 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 So a few quick questions about the instruments because. It's like the smallest ukulele that you rock. I'll never see anybody play a ukulele <laughs> like that. And the bass. And then we're going to get into what you, you were playing, too. She's like a blow master. So <laughs> let's, let's start with the uh, ukulele. Very different. 
Yeah, it's a tenor ukulele. It's uh, pronounced ukulele uh, is the proper pronunciation. Okay. Uh, and it is actually acoustic, but it has no sound hole, so I can electrify it. And I got it from Hawaii. It's made by Pono. So you kind of tweak that yourself then? No, they offer that sort of model, but uh, you know, the pedal choice and the amps and all that was, you know. Okay, my, yeah. your own little touch. And your instrument, the bass? Uh, I play the ukulele bass or the U bass, uh, made by a company called Kala. Uh, the strings are like rubber bands, kind of uh, interesting. I take very tiny, it's about 22 inches. Uh, it's basically the, the sweet go-kart of basses. So. Did you decide, like, let's play small instruments when, we, when you were forming the band? Kinda. How did that come about? I mean, well, it, we played together in a progressive rock funk jam band with full instruments, guitars, piano, bass. And it started as a side project to play on the subway that me and Nate uh, put together. And then as we recorded and played it, it was picking up some steam, so the rest of the band decided, and now we've completely morphed into Cousin Earth, and we actually play some of those progressive tunes with the ukes now. Okay, and your instrument, that's something I've never seen, ever. Uh, it's, it's called a melodica. Uh, some people call it a wind organ or an air piano, but you need the breath and you have to play the keys at the same time to power it, to make it work. Because I've never seen that here. So where, how did you even find something like that? Uh, I actually discovered it through uh, musicians I played with throughout the world, on, um, from throughout the world on a cruise ship. Uh, but when I researched the instrument, it was developed um, by Honer in Germany in the 1960s. And uh, Suzuki snatched it up and uh, marketed it to the school system. And now in the Japanese educational system, all students learn on these little melodicas or melodians. Wow, that is so interesting. And it was great. You played beautifully, all of you. Thank You're you. You're a fun band, <laughs> great sounds. Who wrote Puerto Rican pancakes? That guy. Uh, that would be me. <laughs> Hello. You did. Are you Puerto Rican? I am not even remotely Puerto Rican. Did you ever go to Puerto Rico and I have did. pancakes? Actually, is that it's, where this it's a true story. <laughs> yeah, it's a true story. Okay. Uh, I had, uh, uh, I've had Puerto Rican pancakes on two occasions uh, made for me by two different individuals. And uh, the song is just about... Having fun, partying real late, and it's Puerto regular Rican pancakes, pancakes that you had in Puerto Rico, or is there something well, special yeah, yeah, to yeah, it? Vanilla and cinnamon, and that makes it Puerto Rican. And the fact uh, that it's okay. actually in Puerto Rico, or perhaps made by a Puerto Rican person. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. How did you guys all meet to to get together? Uh, Terry, maybe. Uh, well, uh, uh, me and Corey uh, worked at, uh, still do at Hard Rock uh, Cafe in Times Square. That's where I met him. And uh, he was uh, auditioning musicians to jam in, in Mercury Landing. So I came by, he picked up Nate off of uh, Craigslist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nate brought <laughs> Joe. Wow, more than sales items on Craigslist, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Tara, else. too. Tara, you, you're from Craigslist, Craigslist too, right? Also, so yeah. Really? So Craigslist and Hard Rock came together in, in Brooklyn yeah. to create a band. And I guess Joe and Nate knew each other previously. Oh, that's we, uh, we played in a Frank Zappa tribute band in college together. Uh, oh, okay. And, and, and we're going to get to one of your songs has a, a, it's a very strong Zappa influence. He, he's big for, uh, for me and Nate and pretty much most of the band. I mean, he's uh, But it's not the next song genius. we're doing, right? We're doing Green Thumb Jimmy next. Mm -hmm. Who wrote that song? Uh, really we wrote it together, songs. Corey and I. He wrote the verse lyrics, and uh, we wrote the chorus and the vegetable breakdown as together, and I wrote the music. All right, so let's let's let everybody hear that song, and then we'll come back and talk about that song. Okay? Sounds good. So this is Green Thumb Jimmy. Friend named Jimmy, and he had a real green thumb, but he lived atop a skyscraper in the land of Oa. Should have had a farm, but instead he had a street. The tractor never really worked upon that thing called green. Oh, Jimmy, don't go home. Jimmy, you're not alone. Green thumb, Jimmy, you've got your vegetables, so pass them around. No worries that his roof could not be tilled. He had to have his farm or else he would not be fulfilled. So he got some pots and planters and he filled them all with seeds. Buried in the dirt, he made sure there were no weeds. Oh, Jimmy, don't go home. Jimmy, you're not alone. Drink up, Jimmy. You got your vegetables so fast for us. You can't fertilize the street, but give them 
carrots. Okay, that was Green Thumb Jimmy. So now, you two wrote this song, and where does this come from? Um, a buddy of mine from college, uh, we build amps together. He was in a bluegrass outfit. He plays uh, banjo in it, and when I would go visit him to work on the amps, he'd always have me jam with the other bluegrass musicians. It's fun. It's, that's where the music comes from. It's about coming together and singing along, you know, and a lot of times it's simple chord changes, but it's a melody everyone can kind of latch on to. So when we started this band, I realized that the uke could be, sound like a banjo if you pick it a certain way, and I just wanted to do that to pay tribute to him. And, and you thought of a farmer, so that's why you were like, Jimmy's growing stuff? Well, <laughs> that, was, that was on Corey. He started the idea for it, but yeah, the idea is, you know, we're from the city, and so, you know, the idea of a farm in the city is kind of ridiculous, and you can kind of go from there. I, I don't know where these ideas come from. I, it's <laughs> like, you know, that it really came upon me one day, you know, struck by lightning, Drank a you know quarter unicorn's blood, and then the next thing you know, <laughs> Green Thumb Jimmy, it exists. You know that's that's kind of how songs work, I guess. Sometimes gardening is important. Gardening is important. so you started with these two different instruments here. How do you chime in with your instrument? With gosh, that's interesting actually, because I was just singing for a while and doing percussion instruments and uh, random things. I actually hurt my ankle. And I didn't know what I was going to do with all my downtime, so I bought a melodica <laughs> and learned how to play it. And I said, I'm going to turn this bad thing into something good and uh, spend all that time sitting on the couch with my foot up learning how to play this instrument I had, you know, discovered maybe a So year it was prior. easy for you to chime in with the rhythms and the melodies? and Well, these guys helped me a lot. I do have to say they've been, they've all been saints um, teaching me because I do have some training in piano. I've never really played an instrument with a group before. So these guys have all kind of like been gracious and taken me under their wing and really kind of fine-tuned um, my ear to play along with them. Oh. Yeah. Very, I mean, they very took me by the hand. They helped me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now this is the next song that we're going to do is Dirty Wet Rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to get more into this, but this is the one that really has that, that Zappa sound. So who wrote this one? Is it... Did you? Uh, Terry and I wrote that one mostly. I wrote the, again, I, I generally write the music and uh, bring it and shop it, although Terry and uh, Corey both write songs by themselves. I mean, we, it's So you love every, Zappa. I love Zappa. Mm -hmm. I love everything. You love everything. So you were just like, it sounds like, like, like Zappa, but it's good? Yeah, I, <laughs> I just, I just kind of took the, the musical themes. It has very Middle Eastern uh, feel to it. So I wanted to sort of pay tribute to that. That's why, you know, you got a lot of these long, really high notes, like. Well, we're going to hear the song. We're going to come back and get more into it. Dirty, Wet, Rock.
Have you ever tested your mind against the questions of existence? So what are you? Do you have a natural purpose? And can you fit into the paradigm that's been depicted with persistence? Are we on our way now? Here's the on the horizon. Or are we going to come up on a cliff and go over it like a
we're back. That was Dirty Wet Rock. It was. The Zappa-influenced sound <laughs> in the song. So you were saying you, you two wrote this song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, Zappa is, uh, is definitely a big influence, but another one is a band called Consider the Source. Um, and uh, I took lessons with uh, their guitar player, and he's very you know, influenced by all these world musics. And he, he's a, a big inspiration for me as far as that song as well. Um, so I, I got to throw his name out there. His name's Gabriel Marin. He's genius. So. Okay. And who wrote the lyrics? Uh, Terry. I did, yeah. Uh, Where was your head at? Um, well, you it thinking? was actually, it was like a realization I had when I woke up for, from a dream, right? Like, because um, in the, in extra dimensional realms, like where your spirit exists, time doesn't flow in the same way. So really, we're all at the beginning and the end of our lives behind our lives and so the idea behind the song is like uh we're all there kind of waiting for you to finish your life to like applaud how good you did but you're also there too uh applauding yourself because we're all one and here i thought he was mad at his pet rock or something no no the, 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 wet, the dirty wet rock is the earth yeah exactly uh, in this metaphor okay so it goes great with you cousin earth yeah how'd you come up with the name cousin earth well uh so we started in a band called Mercury Landing, like we talked about earlier, and uh, the original name for the band was Ukulelian, and uh, we... You like the ukuleles, okay, good. Yeah, ahead. well, because that was the original concept. Uh, like, I, I think Tara picked up the melodica because she was like, they all have instruments, I want one, you know? Um, uh, and we've, we've grown and, and, and all of that, but we, we ran into a situation where we had to change the name of the band, and so we felt like Cousin Earth kind of captured that out of space theme, that unity. A lot of our lyrics are either, you know, goofy and fun or about like what Terry's talking about, how we're all kind of connected in one and need to like rise above. A little out of this world. Yeah, yeah. a little, you know, a little. But related. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like a cousin. Yeah. Right, okay, there you go, there you go. But it's it, definitely a fun sound. Definitely fun sound. You guys are having a lot of fun, you can tell performing and that's always good <clears throat> when it's genuine when it really comes out yeah you know it's it's portrayed well Thank you're the you. quiet one back there oh boy. But, something, Nate. but you're I'm the nucleus um, you're giving them all the beat right yeah that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> and with you were you were all right like this is a little different but we're gonna this is gonna be great what do you wh i'm sorry what do you mean with yeah. the sound with their instruments oh yeah no i mean like me and him um did the Frank Zappa band way back in college, whatever, four or five years ago, and um, and I met Corey way back in the, when the day when I first moved to uh, New York City. So uh, so it just kind of went from there and steamrolled as a like a little project on the side, and then and then uh, you know it became we we kind of put our old band Mercury Landing to the side and pushed this thing forward. Cause and you're seemed, having fun with it. Yeah, exactly. It just <clears> seems <throat> like we're all more into that idea of a project. So. Now, last song coming up, Womp. Now this is like the probably the most fun that <laughs> this the sound of it. So let's hear Womp and we're gonna come back to talk about the fun. <laughs>
That was Womp. Now you have the most fun in that song. I, I, the I, sounds I, that come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I practice. I, I, I've always liked to beatbox and make funny noises, so that comes in handy every once in a while. A little, this was the song with a little rap in it, too, right? Yeah. 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 There's a little hip hop influence. So I grew up in the in the 80s and 90s, so hip hop was definitely a huge influence on my uh, lyrical stylings. Is so, so you wrote? The song, the lyrics? Um, well, me and Corey actually uh, wrote it on a road trip uh, together. We were just rapping, rapping in the car. It was a long uh, stretch of road, nothing to do. Yeah, we just made <laughs> up some rap lyrics, so we threw it down. It was originally kind of instrumental, but uh, we figured it could use uh, some, some uh, dope rhymes, uh, so we threw some dope rhymes in there. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Super Mario was born in Toronto. Yep. So sure. when they come, when I was saying, they do a road trip, you guys get together for rehearsal, and they say, listen, this is what we came up with. You just put your own, you know, add your own spin to it with the, to collaborate a little bit, or you're giving them direction? Usually everybody has, the, uh, like, somebody comes in with, like, a big idea, and then everybody just adds a bunch of little ideas on top of the big idea. Because I would think it's really hard for you, uh, with the instrument that you're playing, it's just all by ear, it's not like... Well, I, um, they can tell me the chords. They can tell me, oh, this is an E major chord, and I know how to translate that onto um, the keyboard. So it's not, it's not that terrible, but every once in a while there is a line or something that perhaps maybe Joe figured out on the ukulele and he really wants in the song, so he'll teach it to me on the melodica. And yeah, that is earing it out. We just kind of try to communicate to each other you know, any way we can and figure it out as a team. Well, definitely the teamwork, like I said, you guys are having a lot of fun, and that comes through. The sound is great. So where can we all Thank find you, you Cousin Earth? Uh, <laughs> CousinEarth.com. Orbiting. Uh, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Cousin Earth. Twitter.com slash Cousin Earth. Basically, you set, type in Cousin Earth and band or music uh, in Google will come up. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the Kepler planet's kind of stealing our buzz a little bit. Yeah. So when you type in Cousin Earth by itself, you got to scroll three or four down to find us. You know, because that planet. Yeah, but you know, Ooh, that planet is planet. nowhere near as cool as us. Yeah. Even though there could be life on that planet. There could be. There could be. But I, I don't and you list where you're playing. Where yeah, you're we play in the Northeast. Uh, this, w this fall, we have a really great schedule lined up. We'll be in Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, upstate New York. Um, we're oh, so you're definitely not limited to New York. No. 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 And, and we're actually, releasing a record. We, yeah, do it up. You got it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We're uh, we're releasing an album, and it's gonna have uh, seven songs, and we're releasing it November twentieth. We're playing at the Bowery Electric Bowery in Manhattan. Electric in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Oh well, good luck to you guys. I hope it's a great show, and thanks for being here on Raw, and thanks, thanks for, for watching.